Hi guys, today I wanted to talk to you about foundation and concealer. All right, so I wanted to come on here today and I wanted to just kind of go over some basics when it comes to foundation and concealer, different ways to apply it, and the benefits of all of that stuff. So foundation, there's tons out there. There's a, it's a very overwhelming situation. What I always recommend, if you aren't really sure where to start, go ahead, go to a Sephora, go to an Ulta. I'm kind of partial to Sephora because they have a little bit more knowledge when it comes to this and they have a little bit more technology they've really worked on. You can go in there, they're gonna look at your skin, they're gonna do this little machine thing, they call it like Skin IQ, I think. And they're gonna tell you what kind of skin type you have, problem areas you have. So like I have really red, like borderline rosacea in my face. I have some discoloration. I don't really have a whole lot of like blemishes or acne I need to cover but I tend to go in full coverage side because I want to hide that redness. Whereas you might not have that issue. You might have more fine lines and wrinkles and things like that, where you would want to get something a little bit lighter. That's not going to sink in to those areas. And they're going to really help you direct you into the right place for that. Another awesome thing about Sephora is they will give you samples of these different foundations. You can get up to three. I think every time you go, you don't have to purchase anything to do this. And it really helps you kind of try out the foundations before you commit to buying a $60 foundation. That way you can really wear it and see how it wears on your face. So that's really the only way you're going to be able to tell if it's really what you're wanting and really does what you need it to do. Cause it could look great when you first put it on an hour, six hours, 12 hours later, could be a totally different story. So once you've figured all this information out, you've decided if you need more of a lighter coverage foundation, a medium coverage foundation, a full coverage foundation, maybe you're wanting something that's more of like a tinted moisturizer, which is just gonna kind of even things out, a BB cream, which is gonna have some skincare and foundation kind of mixed in. There's all these different situations when it comes to foundation. Once you've figured that out, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to apply your foundation. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. I, when it comes to like tinted moisturizers and things like that, tend to use my hands, which obviously I'm not gonna do on a person that I'm doing their makeup on them, but for myself, I use my hands. I feel like it's just easier for me to get it on there. It's very like high school of me to do that, but it's what I do. So the other tool I really like to use when it comes to my foundation, especially when I'm putting my full coverage foundation on, I'm trying to do a full face of makeup, is a beauty sponge. There's some big brands out there. You've got Beauty Blender brand, which is very, very well known. I think everyone's heard of them. They make these really awesome beauty blenders. I have one here somewhere. You wet them, they like get, ah. You wet them, they get larger. You use them to really kind of pat on your foundation. You're going in more of like a patting motion when you're doing this and they work really well. I am like a super, super cheap person. So I have a hard time spending $20 on one of these bad boys, even though they do last for a decent amount of time. Um, and they do give you a really great, like nice smooth finish. But I have actually found this really awesome brand that I absolutely love called Juno and Co and they make this awesome beauty blender and it's more of a like velvety type finish and it gives you a very, very awesome, like smooth blurred look to your foundation, which I absolutely love. And they're only like eight bucks, which is awesome too. And they have different like shapes and different, different ones. They have like this one here, which is great for like stamping things out. Um, I use this to kind of fix up my eyeshadow if it's messed up. This is great for also doing like your under eye. You can set your face with your setting powder with this one, or they have more of like the traditional kind of beauty blender um, shape as well. So I love these. I've also got my mom kind of hooked on these ones too. So we usually like go in on like four packs and stuff, but these, this is a great, great brand. I'll link it below for you guys. They sell them. Um, they have their own website. They sell them on Amazon and they also sell them on Beautylish, so you can get them in lots of different places. But like I said, they're super affordable and I love the way that they make my foundation look. Or, you know, you might already have a beauty blender at home and that's totally fine too. And tons of other companies make some type of beauty sponge like this. So I prefer beauty sponges, but there's other options out there as well. So another really popular option is a foundation brush. 
Um, this is a really good one by It Cosmetics, but there's also tons and tons out there. It's gonna look very similar to like a Kabuki brush where it has like a flatter, more dense um, bristles. And this works great too. I use, have used a foundation brush before and I will use them sometimes on clients, but um, I tend to find that it requires a little bit more work to kind of get those little like brush lines out. And I also feel like it, I have to use more product because I lose a lot of product into inside this brush than I do on a beauty blender. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my foundation for you guys on both sides of my face. I'll apply it on this side of my face with a beauty blender and then I will apply it on this side of my face with a brush just so you can see the difference and I can kind of show you what I mean when I say like, it looks a little bit like I have less product with the brush than I do with the beauty blender and you can kind of see the difference in the finishes. When it comes to foundation, I, like I said, tend to go on the full coverage side of things. So like I love my Amazonian Tarte Clay uh, foundation. I have a couple that have like Aragon oil in them because I do have drier skin. Um, I absolutely love this um, Bally Body BB Cream, which is what I usually use when I have my, you know, fake tan on. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this today to show you what I'm talking about when it comes to foundation. But again, you can use whichever foundation you decide you wanna buy. There's also some really awesome budget-friendly foundations out there. I absolutely love the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. I've tried it in the Dewy, I've tried it in the normal one, and I love them both, and it's only like, six bucks at like Walgreens, CVS, Walmart, Target, all those places carry it. Um, Elf makes some really great foundations. So don't feel like you have to go out there and spend 60, 70, whatever crazy amount of money that people spend on foundation to find something that works for you. There's gonna be some trial and error and that's okay too. And if you wanna try something that's more of like that budget friendly drugstore type brand, and then once you find something that you really like and you know, oh, I really like dewy foundations, then you can go and check out a little bit more of a expensive dewy foundation or, oh, I really like the foundations that are a little bit more mattifying or whatever. I always you know, say start out wherever you feel comfortable and you can always try a more expensive brand when you're ready to transition to that. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and apply this foundation for you guys, like I said, on both sides of my face, and then I'll come back and I'll kind of talk about, you know, what I notice between the two. Okay, so I've gone ahead and like I said, I've applied with my uh, Juno & Co sponge on this side and I've used a brush on this side. I don't know how well you can tell on camera, but I can really tell a difference in the amount of product that I have on one side of my face versus the other. So this one really kind of covered a lot more of the redness and the stuff like my discoloration that I have in my face. Whereas on this side, I feel like it didn't cover as much and I use pretty much the same amount of product on both sides. I just tend to see that I lose a lot of product inside this brush. So that's just kind of why I tend to steer clear of the brush versus the blender. But if you're wanting something a little bit lighter, a little bit less product on your face, then the brush might be for you. It really depends on what you're wanting it to do and what your preference is. So once we've done this, the next step is concealer. Concealer is, again, very similar to foundation as far as there being tons and tons of choices out there. It's very similar in the fact that it has different levels of coverage. You have some more you know, lighter coverage concealers. You have some really heavy duty concealers out there and concealer does just what it says it does. It helps kind of conceal things that the foundation really maybe isn't gonna work as well on. Another thing concealer is great for is kind of brightening up your face. So I like to use my concealer almost as like a highlight on my face. So there's some places that I put concealer to brighten up my face, give my face some dimension. That's kind of why I use concealer more so than to correct because I don't have a whole lot of real blemishes that I have to really, really correct. So with concealer, if you're using it to do that kind of brightening situation, I always recommend going a shade or two lighter than your skin tone. And that might sound crazy, but it actually really does work. It helps just kind of give you a little bit of that pop of brightness under your eyes to kind of make you look a little bit more, you know, alive and awake. And I do it on my nose and certain areas like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on here. We'll talk about it as I do it, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab my lighter concealer here. Today I'm gonna be using a Cover Effects uh, Power Play Concealer, which is kind of a medium coverage. I don't like to really use the heavier 
uh, full coverage concealers anymore because I am starting to get more of those little lines and things. And I notice that the heavier concealers kind of sink in and kind of make it look like I have more lines and wrinkles than I actually do. And you don't ever want that to be the case. If you have more maturing skin, less is more in that situation. So I know like for my mom, she was having a really hard time because she wanted to cover those dark circles, but she was doing it the way I do it, where I do concealer and foundation. And we kind of found that she had to pick one or the other. And because she was wanting to brighten, she decided to, you know, go with concealer under her eyes, but she doesn't put any foundation in her eyes. So she stops her foundation right about where her eye socket bone, you know, that bone right there starts. And she only puts concealer under her eyes. You can also do just foundation under your eyes. It really depends on what you're, um, needing, but it's a little bit of a trial and error. So I would say if you notice that you look like you have more wrinkles and lines with makeup on than you do without makeup, it's probably because you're using too much product. So just dial it down until you find a really good, happy place that's going to work for you. So here I'm going to go ahead and put this concealer everywhere where I want to brighten up and kind of have stand out. So I'm going to go under my eyes. I usually do three dots. Some people will do like triangles, X's, like it doesn't really matter. It's not, it's a personal preference. I always go on the bridge of my nose. I do my T zone area here. I do a triangle or dots, or if I'm doing my eyebrows, I would kind of maybe do a couple dots above my eyebrow just to kind of shape out my brow and clean it up. Um, I just got my eyebrows like microbladed, so I'm not really putting any product on them. So I'm just going to leave them alone. They're healing. And then I also put it on my chin cause I just want that to also be accentuated and brightened. So once you get all that on there, you can go ahead and use your beauty blender that you used for your foundation under my eye. A lot of times I use my finger to really dab cause I don't want to lose any of that product. I'm going to go ahead and use this today just to kind of show you how these work but I'm just going to be going in and you want to really do kind of like this dabbing motion, very similar to what you do if you're putting foundation on with a blender. And I also bring this concealer onto my eyelid. They do make like eyelid primer, but I really seriously believe that it's concealer in a bottle renamed as primer. So you have to buy it on top of everything else. And I, again, I'm all about saving money where I can. So I use concealer as my eye primer. So I just kind of, bring that onto my eyelid and I call it a day and I have tried tons of eye primers and I don't notice one bit of difference between that and putting concealer there. So I just go with the concealer totally up to you. If you already have an eye primer that you like to use, you can still use that as well. And then I always put this on my cupid's bow too, cause that's another place I want to kind of accentuate, especially once you put lipstick on and things like that, it kind of just helps, you know, your lips pop out a little bit more. I do my chin and I really bring that right underneath my lips as well. And I kind of bring this concealer above my mouth a little bit over the whole top part of my lip again to accentuate my lips, but also to kind of hide some uh, peach fuzz is what we're going to call it <laughs> that I have there too. And you're going to want to bring this concealer under your eye pretty much out to the tip of your eyebrow. And you want to bring it down to about this tip of your nose. So it's kind of this triangle shape that you have, and that's just going to brighten that whole area up. And you just want to really blend that into your foundation. So it kind of has this nice seamless look going on. And we're doing this right on the sides of our nose as well, which will also help later on when we go to contour, um, help keep that whole area nice and bright. And this also is my oiliest area on my nose. So I really feel like if I, don't do a good job with my concealer and my foundation in this area, it starts to separate and break. So I really try to make sure I blend this in on my nose very, very well. And that's pretty much it. So that is what it's going to look like when you've done your foundation and your concealer. And then the next step would be to set your face, which we're going to be doing next week. So we'll make sure you guys have your little notifications on. So you see that video, but this is really it for foundation and concealer. Like I said, I know it's overwhelming. There's a lot of choices out there. Ask for help. If you aren't sure, go to your local beauty store, your local Sephora, Ulta. They're really, really knowledgeable when it comes to that kind of stuff. And they're really good at pointing you in the right direction. There's some really great brands out there that really have focused on making sure they have foundations for every skin type, every age, type and that's really it. I also, you know, always say too, just because something works for one person doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So just keep that in mind when you're trying things out and when you're asking for advice, 
It might be great for your best friend, but it might look terrible on your face. Like I cannot wear Fenty foundation. Everyone loves it. It's so amazing. I can't wear it. My skin's too dry and it looks like I have like caked makeup on my face. It is what it is. I've tried it multiple times, I've tried adding things to it. I want to love it because everyone says it's amazing. Just doesn't work for my skin and that's okay. So don't feel like you have to try something just because someone else swears by it. Um, that's, that's really all I've got for you guys. I hope this was helpful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, hit that notification bell so you get notifications on videos I do in the future. If you liked the video, give me a like. I'd really appreciate it. And I hope you guys like this video and I will see you on the next one.